Okay, this is part two of my encaustic medium workshop. And what I'm going to talk today about is the surface, what to use encaustic medium on. Um, but before I get to that, uh, let me show you a few of the colors I made last week. And uh, I wanted to also mention uh, how I keep my colors warm and workable. So these are a few colors that I made last week. You might remember I was making this yellow color at the end of the show. Um, this is kind of my process. I like to make my colors take a few days and make some color and then just put the color together and see how it works. Uh, another thing I wanted to mention is how I keep my color warm and workable and that's on this griddle here and these are just tuna fish cans and this seems to work really good. Now you really shouldn't use encaustic on stretched canvas because stretched canvas is flexible and the medium isn't flexible. So most people work on a plywood surface or a, some kind of a wood substrate. What I like to work on is three quarter inch plywood for small projects and a braced panel for anything larger. Um, the largest that I will work on three quarter inch plywood is 12 by 12 inches. After that it gets heavy and I feel that the plywood be could become unstable and want to uh, warp. So this is a good way to go with a brace panel. Now you can buy these brace panels and I'm also going to make a video on how to make one of these brace panels. But you can get them at um, some, of your, uh, some of your art supply stores, especially the big ones that are online. Now the way to prep these panels, some people will paint directly on the plywood. Uh, I don't. I generally put canvas over the plywood or I put paper over the plywood. Uh, you might wonder why I'm using such a thick plywood, and that's because what happens if you paint on something like this, which is, this, is a, this is masonite, some people call it hardboard. If you paint on a thin surface like this, you end up with a mounting problem uh, at, the, at the end of your project. So say you make a really uh, good painting on this, well, how do you mount it? Uh, and that just becomes another issue, something else you have to deal with. So I avoid that by just working with a three-quarter inch piece of plywood. Um, so let me show you how I will mount paper onto my working surface. Now I'm going to cover this plywood with some paper. I've already cut the paper about a quarter of an inch larger than the piece of plywood. And so I'm using Elmer's wood glue and that's what I've always used for years and that's because it has a little bit of a heavier body than the white glue and it sets up faster. Okay, now the whole surface is covered with a thin layer of glue and I'll take my paper, put the paper face down and then drop the plywood right on top of it. Now I'll put a little weight on there for just a couple of minutes. Now I'm taking the weight off and it's only been uh, maybe five or ten minutes, not too long. I just, I just waited for a little while to keep the paper from shifting around when I put the iron to it. Now I know a lot of people will just weight the paper or the canvas but I find that using the iron gets any kind of um, bubbles or imperfections out of the paper and so this works uh, pretty good for me. Um, you can feel the surface getting hot and I feel like that also um, activates the glue or, or helps the glue dry faster. Once the surface is cooled down, uh, just flip it over and cut the excess paper off using the panel as your guide. And so this is what you end up with, and this is a good surface to use encaustic medium on. Uh, one, because it's absorbent, and the other, because it's rigid. You want the encaustic medium to absorb into the material 
that it's going that it's laying on uh, for adhesion. Now you really don't have to put paper on the substrate. You could work directly on the birch plywood. I just like to have a white ground to start with and I would prefer not to have the grain coming through my imagery. Now that may change but for now I like to have the white ground. So I either put some paper on my substrate or some canvas. Um, this is the paper that I use and it's just a heavyweight paper. I, I, it was a pad that I had in my studio and I've been using this kind of paper for years. It works good. Um, now, the reason why I use three-quarter inch panel for my small works, and it's really so the works are easier to frame and display. So, these are encaustic transfers, and this is what we're going to do in our next video, uh, part three. And so these are done on three-quarter inch plywood. Now, if I had done these paintings on quarter inch or eighth inch masonite like this here, it would be difficult to frame. Uh, because I would have to mount it and that's just another step so if I had done these paintings on this masonite then I would have to mount the masonite to half inch plywood and then I could attach it but that's just another step and it, my feeling is if you can avoid that step uh, it's just one less thing you have to do all right so these are going to be a lot of fun this will be our next video I'm having a lot of fun with these transfers lately so now I'm going to do something very similar for attaching canvas to my brace panel here. So the first thing I'm going to do is cut my canvas probably about three inches larger than the brace panel. I just want some room to work with because I'm going to wrap the edge of the panel in canvas. I'm spreading out some Elmer's wood glue. And once it's spread out, I'll attach the canvas. So my glue is spread out evenly, and I'll bring my canvas over and just eyeball it, sort of center it. I've got some room to work with as far as the canvas having enough room to go around the edge. Press it down and flip it over. And I'll iron this out. Now I should add that this is a pretty heavy weight canvas. I think it's about, I think it's a 12 ounce or is it a 12 pound canvas? I think it's 12 ounce. I did use a thinner canvas once and the glue came up through the canvas. So I use a heavy canvas. Now I'm putting some glue on the sides of the stretcher. And then I take the iron and glue that right on. And this really makes the glue dry fast. You can get a nice clean edge on the side of your stretcher. Once I finish this side, I'll go to the next side uh, directly across. And then you do the other two sides. Once the face has been glued on and the sides have been glued on, you put a few dabs of glue on the seam or, or the corner and then hold the iron on that for a minute or two and that stays there nice and, nice and strong. Well I've let this dry for about an hour or two and now I'm going to cut the excess canvas off. And I'm just using the wood stretcher as my guide. Okay, now this is done. You might take a minute and put a little glue on the uh, fringe here so it doesn't fray on you. But uh, other than that, this is uh, a nice surface now to use in caustic, in caustic medium on. Um, it's rigid and it's absorbent. So our next video is going to be making these encaustic transfers and these really are a lot of fun. 
Uh, in the beginning, we'll take maybe two or three minutes just to show you how to prepare a surface because what you need to do is fuse some of the encaustic into the paper or the canvas. Actually, when I do transfers, I always use a, a paper surface. But um, that's what we're doing next time. Thanks for watching.